Hi everyone, so today I'm doing a tag and that tag is your bookish identity tag. I am stoked to do this. It should be a fun compilation of different elements of books that I enjoy and how I fit into those books. Uh, also, if my hair looks wet, it's because it is wet. I just took a shower. If I sound tired, it's because I'm sick, which is the same reason why I didn't do a tag yesterday. Right now, I'm a little dizzy, but I'm going to do this tag because I want to get out some awesome videos for you guys, and I've been missing doing my videos, so here I go. First of all, the person who tagged me was Books Over Looks. I will put her channel down below. She is awesome. She's such an intelligent, sharp person, and yet she's really caring at the same time. And she always has smart things to say about the books that she reads and what they mean in the real world. So I totally recommend if you're not already subscribed to her channel, but at the very least, you go check it out. Also, the original uh, people who made this book tag, if you don't already know, are Katastic, Benjamin of Tomes, and Little Book Owl, and they worked together to make this tag, so I will put that video below, uh, too, if you haven't already seen it, which probably most of you have. So the first question is, which dystopian slash fantastical world would I live in? And this is a question that I'm sure a lot of us think a lot about because we read books and we kind of get immersed in the world and we just want to live there. Not in all of them, not some of the dystopian books. They're pretty scary. But I'm gonna give an obvious answer and that is Harry Potter. I grew up on Harry Potter. I think all of us can sit there and imagine ourselves as witches and wizards with wands and magic and all that great stuff. A second answer that's probably a little less well known is I would love to live in Howl's Moving Castle. I think. That would be fantastic, and Howl's Moving Castle, kind of, uh, something bad happens to it, but I'm going to pretend that it didn't, and I'm going to live in that, and it's going to be wonderful, and Calcifer will be there. If you haven't read that book or seen the movie, go do watch slash read both. The second question is, who would your partner be? And this is kind of an odd question. I'm not one of those people that reads a book and then thinks about dating or wanting to date the person in the book. Uh, it's just, it's not one of those things that I do. I think more about the world and the events than dating the people, but I don't see anything wrong with thinking that way. If I had to make a decision when push comes to shove, I would pick kind of another odd answer that fits into the first question, and that would probably be Hal, an older version of Hal, but it's just he, like, on the surface is really, like, silly and, like, lighthearted and sometimes a bit childish, but underneath all of that, he really, really cares. And on top of that, he's a magician, and his castle shows different places, and I just, I love it. I live in House Moving Castle with Hal, what can I say? But that's not something I put a lot of thought into, so... The next question comes from the Percy Jackson series, and I've read the first book of this series a while back. I really want to reread the series, but I don't quite remember all the things from it, but basically it's Greek gods and goddesses and I chose two one mother one father the father would be Kronos which is the god of time I think that that would be so interesting to be able to be affected by that maybe I could go back and forth in time maybe I could see time move something awesome I would just love that and secondly I picked Athena for wisdom and for handcraft making that sort of thing I just and intelligence I just love all of that I love reading I love knowledge so that would kind of fit in with that I think the next question is would you be a downworlder or a Nephilim and I said that I'd probably be a downworlder I just have the feeling that I would either be like a werewolf or I would be a warlock. It just sounds more interesting to be not the obvious good thing, but rather the person working underneath uh, who is still good and yet has to make harder decisions and isn't liked as much, if that makes any sense. 
The question after that is, which Harry Potter house would you be in? And I did not know the answer to this question. I think that everyone who grows up reading the books wants to be in Gryffindor because the book kind of makes it sound like that's the best house to be in. I'm going to be honest. Like, it makes all the other houses sound not quite as good. But when I did the sorting test online, I got Hufflepuff. So that actually was a good choice because Hufflepuff stands for a loyal, dependable, and hardworking, and that kind of fits in with me. There were a couple other ones, uh, I think Ravenclaw and Gryffindor were pretty close for me. I think the number of points for Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff were even tied. I think Slytherin was the only one that I was really like, not anywhere close to. The question after that is, oh, which faction would you be in? This is from the Divergent Trilogy, which I am so excited for Allegiant, just like everybody else out there. And I looked at the different factions, and the one that sounded most like me is Erudite, Erudite, something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it. I really should, but I don't. It has to do with intelligence. Not that the other factions aren't smart, but people who think about reading and learning and all that good stuff. And that is something that I would really enjoy. I don't like how they're represented in the book. Obviously, each faction is a little bit too extreme, and I wouldn't want to be that extreme, but I think that's kind of the point of the book. So kind of a more well-adjusted version of that faction. And finally, from the Northern Lights uh, series, which is basically like the Golden Compass in those books, which would be your daemon, demon, something like that. And I chose a cat. I'm not sure what type of cat. Maybe even just a house cat. I love cats. I also love dogs. But I have two cats. And I just have a feeling that that's what that would be. So those are my answers to the questions. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed learning a little bit about how I fit into each of these worlds of these very popular, awesome books. And now I'm going to tell you who I am going to tag. First, I'm tagging April Books. She is pretty awesome. I'm sure most of you are subscribed to her, but if you are not, go check out her channel. I will link it down below. She is fun, exciting, energetic, and way cooler than I am. Second is Books and Junk. She's pretty new uh, to BookTube, and she recently tagged me. I think she might be about as new as I am. I'm not sure. Anyways, she's really awesome. She's always goofy and fun and really, like, just very genuine. And I tag you. And finally is Amanda Pants Reads, and she is really, really new to book two, but is also really awesome, and I'm kind of jealous how well-spoken she is. I wish I was as well-spoken, but we can't all have everything, so I tag her too. Tag anyone else that wants to do this tag, and for those people I did tag, don't feel like you have to do this tag if you don't want to, only if you think it'd be fun. Anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'm hoping to be doing another video soon, like my usual schedule, unless I get sicker. Anyways, have a wonderful day. Bye, guys.